Outrocast. Maddie, how's your day going aside from having to talk to somebody like me today? I mean, it just started. I mean, I woke up, you know, and drank coffee, had some breakfast. There's a lot of cheese on my omelet, so it was pretty good, you know? Cheese makes everything better, except <laughs> if you're lactose intolerant, I guess. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Vegan cheese, meh. But uh, you got the belt behind you, so it's pretty great reminder that you've got the NWA shirt, the belt, and all that. You've got a purpose-driven life right there. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I felt like I had to dress for the occasion with NWA 75 coming up. Why not wear 74? Just to like remind everyone how great I was in that, you know? <laughs> totally. Well, a lot of people try and have that tag where they go, I'm the fastest, youngest rising star in wrestling. But to look at how far you've come in three ish years since debuting in 2019, wow. And you never really talk about that. Yeah. I mean, I like to also shave some time off because I, again, like you said, I started in 2019, but COVID literally took out like a whole year. So I like to play my numbers down, especially so when people do see me, they're like, oh my God, she's so good. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, yeah. On TV within a year of making your debut, is it true that Jazz was your first opponent in the ring? Correct. Uh, on the independent circuit, Jazz was my first match, um, and it was it was terrifying. Uh, it was at Mission Pro, and it was a student versus teacher, um, and she definitely taught me some more things that night. <laughs> right, so your first match was against a Hall of Famer. No big pressure right there. You're on television yeah. within a year. You're a champion within three years or less if we want to take out the COVID asterisk to the whole thing. But I get the feeling that this is only like 5% of what you've tried, what you're hoping to accomplish in your career. Oh, 100%. Um, this is, it feels weird because like, I don't know, in my mind, just like time, I feel like I was 18 just the other day. Um, <laughs> so it's weird to hear people like say how long I've been doing this, or I guess how short in the grand scheme of things that I've been doing this and like listing what exactly I've done because you kind of just live life and you live life. You don't ever like take the time to just like simmer in all of your accomplishments. So I think I need to start doing that a little bit more. I mean, I definitely tell people about how accomplished I am, um, but I just, I think sometimes I forget to simmer in it myself. So maybe I need to be a little bit more full of myself is what it sounds like you're saying. <laughs> I think that that would be justified and you know, you are a reality star in your own right. And what, what I say in regard to that is a lot of wrestlers make it off of their in-ring ability, other people because they cut a great promo, other people because they look great, but you're a social media star on top of all of that. <laughs> so are you a wrestler that's aiming to be a reality star, a reality star that's aiming to be a wrestler? What's the, the goal with all that? I mean, I'm just, I'm just Maddie. Um, I am who I am. I am a great wrestler. Um, <laughs> and uh, I have a, I just happen to have such a great personality. You meet a lot of good wrestlers and they're duds. Um, you just happen to be like a triple threat here. <laughs> well, did, at what age did you know that you wanted to become a wrestler? Um, I actually didn't start looking into it. I didn't even I don't know, like you have people who, and like you're a child, whatever. And like some people watch this and they're like, I'm going to be a wrestler. And like some people are like, I'm going to be a veterinarian. It just to me, it, I never realized like when you, when I watched these people, they were like unattainable. They were superstars. Um, so I didn't even know that was a thing. Uh, but in college, instead of studying for finals, um, one day I got on my computer, I went on to Google and I said, how to become a professional wrestler? Because I was like, if I don't want to do this college thing anymore. I was like, I could be a wrestler or I could be a mortician, you know, like they always have work. <laughs> like you'll never be out of work with a mortician. Everyone's dying. So um, <laughs> I ended up finishing my biology degree. Um, and then I ended up doing wrestling, you know, not mortician school. <laughs> wow. Well, you're originally from Texas or is that Wikipedia lying? No, I am born and raised Texan. It seems like there's more wrestling schools in Texas than anywhere. Maybe Florida is the only place with more. Yeah, I mean, everything is bigger in Texas, so is the wrestling scene. Bigger and better, I would say. And do you still get to call Texas home? The reason I ask is because a lot of wrestlers go, hey, I'm pro, I'm living in Florida now. 
Um, I am still living in Texas. Um, I haven't, if I got a reason to move to Florida, I would, but, um, just from my experience and what you hear when you travel and talk to mm -hmm. people, um, Florida has a great wrestling scene, but the independent wrestling scene, um, is not as, uh, open, I hear. Um, but yeah. whereas like Texas, there's a ton of wrestling uh, independent promotions um, that are good and good quality and are open. <laughs> and open. So what was your gateway into NWA? Because of the many talents I've spoken with from NWA, some people go, oh, I knew Billy from way back when. And other people go, oh, Aaron Stevens is a great dude. In your case, <laughs> who or what was it that brought you into NWA? My talent. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, that, that is the true answer. But... Um, I would say it was probably a combo. Um, I'm not sure who exactly put my name out there first. Um, I know Thunder at the time, she was the NWA Women's Champion or World Women's Champion. Um, <clears throat> I know she had a part and then I think Jazz did as well. Um, but I think both of them just kind of showed uh, Pat Kenny my work and his history. <laughs> Got it. So it wasn't a thought for a second about going to NWA. It was you get the call and you go, this is where I want to be. Yeah. Um, and it kind of all came about around uh, the pandemic-esque time, um, right around I was doing like the AEW darks, like every week, every other week, whatever it was at that time. And so it was like busy. And then those kind of started to slow down and NWA hit me up. Um, and I should have been there a lot sooner, um, but with my trials and tribulations on the indies, um, I ended up with a fractured nose. And so I was like, hey, guys, would love to be there, um, but I can't breathe. So <laughs> uh, so that didn't happen as soon as I could have, but I'm glad that they were patient with me in my recovery and coming back in. So NWA 75, which you mentioned towards the beginning of our conversation, which again, the honor is mine. Thank you for your generous, generous time here, Maddie. Uh, what should we be expecting? Just a championship retaining the title and that's that? I mean, in a sense, because I feel like how many times do we have to go against Pretty Empowered? Like you can put them in any combination. They're literally like just copy and pasted like versions of each other. They all say the same thing. We're probably going to look, I'll break it down. The bell's going to ring. We're going to get in there and they're going to be like, ew, it stinks because that's the only thing they say. And they're like, wow, I'm really good at being mean. Um, and it's going to do the same thing. It's just repeating over and over and over it's like you can put them in whatever combo it's shit smells like shit sorry if i can't say that but it's like you put it in, change it up and like put different girls in but shit's still shit like that's why y'all are together you know shit attracts the flies or flies attract shit whatever it is it's what they are <laughs> just so in a pretty pink bow so <laughs> after you win they don't get a rematch i don't know i think I know the match that was just had with Missa and Ella, if they didn't win, they never got one. I don't know if that's the same stipulations, but I feel like it should. I feel like if you're wearing pink in anyone, anyone who wears pink can no longer get a match. <laughs> uh, so congratulations in advance on your victory. Thank you. And <laughs> the long reign. Are you hoping eventually to get singles gold or does this success as a tag team wrestler lead you to want to be a long-term tag person? Um, I mean, I think we definitely are. Um, it's a niche, a niche a tag team wrestling. I feel like it's not very focused on, so it would be cool to like be someone who could help elevate that. Um, as of right now, I think uh, I'm going to try and stay on Camille's good side, but once she starts getting worn down, you know, I'll let I'll let the other people think they have a shot at her, but I'll sneak in there at some point. Yeah, between you and me, I think she's held the title for way too long now. I mean, she's just that good, I guess, but she'll get tired. She's doing movies and stuff now. Yeah. She'll get real tired. <laughs> I can imagine. And then here, back to you, the last two or three questions before I let you go. What's the number two hobby besides wrestling? Eating eating so endless cheat days or is it just cooking to be able to eat well um i mean a little bit of both but like 
whenever I get to travel on the road or things like that, like having things that I don't normally have. Um, for instance, when I went to Chicago, there's a place called Portillo's and yeah. like the cake shake, there's literally a cake in the shake. And the only reason I knew about that was because I, again, love to eat. And so every once in a while, when you're like in a hotel and there's like nothing to watch, you go on the Food Network and <laughs> or that diners, drive-ins or whatever with Guy Fieri. But they like put like mayonnaise in the cake or something. And that's how they make it like so delectable. Um, but once I heard mayonnaise, I was like, sold. It's a Texan's dream. <laughs> Well, I didn't realize that, that that Texas was pro mayo. Mayonnaise, butter, anything that can clog our arteries, you know, and just really give us that oomph. <laughs> okay, question number two of three here. Uh, obviously, you are a fitness specimen, idealistic. We all know that. When you're training, what music do you listen to by choice? Um... I it, like to listen to Swan or no, no pumpkins and no Swan. No further question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. What music do you actually listen to by choice? Um, oh, by choice. Um, typically I like to listen to anything that like I can sing along to. Um, I know like a lot of people like to listen to like uh, rap or like rock or something like something that get, gets the beat up but like I just like to you know you could listen to some Backstreet Boys and be like mm -mm -mm, you know <laughs> last question before I let you go besides watching NWA power every week and seeing our yeah, tag team favorite, I do that yeah <laughs> what's the second best show on television these days what should we be watching besides you on NWA power and NWA 75 etc Oh, heels. I like that show. <laughs> do, do you have uh, friends on heels? I, I've seen the second season, so it's not spoiling anything for me. But do you have friends on this current season? Um, I mean, even I would like to think they're my friends. Um, <laughs> I definitely do know people who have gotten the opportunity to work on that. So that's cool. Um, am I jealous? Only like slightly a lot, but season three and that was a trick question because i've spotted aaron stevens in the background in a couple of <laughs> but uh the bottom line is this maddie keep up all the greatness it's very exciting to see your ascent and that this is only a small percentage of what's to come so keep it up and looking forward thank you and it is only half of it i guess a quarter as you said actually a quarter <laughs> Outro cast.